You know those spy stories where there's some secret code that needs to be cracked as quickly as possible? Where the alarm has sounded, tensions are high, and getting the information is life or death? Well, what would you say if I told you it's not all high-tech fiction? Credit cards, barcodes, even the ISBN numbers on books all use encryption to secure their information. In fact, most of the time their encryptions work so well that we don't even think about how they ensure accurate charges and protect our bank accounts. But how do these seemingly random numbers work? Cryptography finds its roots in modular arithmetic, a key part of number theory. Simply put, number theory addresses the properties of numbers and the relationships between them. For example, let's look at these expressions. They all represent the number 9. So, we see that numbers can exist in different forms or properties. But the relationships between numbers are also crucial for number theory. Let's use a clock to demonstrate. If it's 10 a.m. and I add 5, is it 15 o'clock? Of course not, it's 3 p.m. Hmm, how does that work? It's because a clock has a modular of 12. That means in a number system with only 12 numbers, we start over once we reach 12. So, the number 3 is congruent with the number 15. The number 4 would be congruent to 16, 5 to 17, and so on. These kinds of number relationships are how encryptions disguise their information, except they work with much larger numbers on greater modulus scales. Unless you know what modulus the encryption is using, it's virtually impossible to know what the intended message is meant to be. These hard-to-crack codes are super important for our everyday financial and personal security.